Hey there, I'm Jess, and it's so great to be with you for a few moments here today. I want to welcome you to our online version of Kingston Standard Church. If you are watching with us for the first time, or if you're returning to our channel, we have lots of different resources that are available to families, both on Facebook and on YouTube. All you have to do is just search up Kingston Standard Church Cabin Kids, and our Facebook page and YouTube channels will pop up so that you are able to access those other interactive resources. So head on over and check those out. Part of our mission as a church is to equip parents for the conversations that they will have with their families as they grow and follow Jesus together. And one of the ways in which we seek to do that is through connecting the themes of scripture to our family videos. I would love to personally invite you to connect with us online or in person if you are in the Kingston area. We would love to see you. But in the description box below here, uh, you're gonna see a link that will take you to our website. Feel free to head over and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cabin Kids, um, and follow us on Facebook as well. And on all those platforms, you're gonna be notified of all the new content when it's posted. If you wanna reach out uh, to us with any prayer requests or questions you might have, send us an email or a message on Facebook, or you're welcome to use the address below here. What would you do? Imagine for a moment it comes to your attention. Someone you've known for a long, long time is accused of saying some things that you really know are completely out of character for them. And so the whole incident, as you hear about it, has developed a lot of traction. I mean, the places where you live and where you work, there's public and private conversations going on about this person. Now, after taking the time to go and check in with them and find out a little bit more about the situation, you find out that they did in fact say that, but it's been taken wildly out of context. Even so, there's growing pressure for them to be fired from their job. Uh, they've already had a bunch of statements made about them and their reputation. Uh, they're being excluded from many of the connections and social circles that they have with people. The public shaming has taken over. And not only that, it seems like anybody who speaks up on their behalf, whether it's online or in any kind of conversation along the way, is meeting the same public shaming kind of fate. Prior connections are pulling back, they're withdrawing, and there's this isolation, both socially and professionally, for anyone who tries to point out that there might be another side to the story. So again, I ask you, what would you do? Now, we've all had times where we've had to decide where we're going to land on a divisive subject. There have been times where you've run into rumors or people that you know that have broken up or blunders that have happened along the way, very public ones for that matter. And we all know what we would like to do in a moment like that, but the truth is there's a lot of moments that maybe some of us have already experienced where we've had to decide where we stand with people. Now today, as we look into scripture, there's a familiar account in the book of Acts and we're going to get to see how it's challenging to stand with people who are in need. And, and we're get, going to get a snapshot of what loyalty can really look like in our lives as we connect with God and allow him to grow it in us. Because we all want to do the right thing when we're faced with tough decisions. And so here's one in Acts chapter 9 starting at verse 26, it says, When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. Now, many of you have heard of this guy, Saul. We come to know him later as the Apostle Paul. But way before he was such an inspiring example, he made a name for himself as an aggressive opponent to followers of Jesus. And he, there were stories of people preaching and sharing Jesus, and it started spreading in a way that was changing people's lives. And Saul was convinced this was a bad thing and something had to be done to stop it. You may recall he was so determined to protect 
the way of life he understood that he had folks beaten, some of them tossed in prison, and even some others, he approved of them being executed. So he was on a single-minded hunt in his local area for anyone who was talking and allowing their lives to be influenced by the message of Jesus. And after he'd created havoc locally, he decided to pursue folks even into other areas with his what we might call a cultural protection detail, maybe he referred to it as, including soldiers and himself and some other kind of individuals along the way. So as many of you know, on the way to this other location, Jesus interrupted him and Saul's life was changed. You may recall how Jesus stepped in and confronted Saul on his way to the city of Damascus. And this was pretty significant because it's documented that Jesus had already left the earth in human form before this incident. When Saul got up, he was blind. You may recall that part of the account. And a few days later, um, God sent a man named Ananias to pray for Saul and release him from his blindness. The scripture account tells us that immediately Saul started telling people about what had happened to him and how Jesus had transformed his life how he'd met Jesus on the road, and he was completely a different person. Now, in here, for the next three years, he's telling people what had happened to him, and some folks who used to be his friends are now kind of looking to get rid of him. So we read, like we just did, that Saul goes back to Jerusalem and tries to connect with the disciples, whom he is now a follower of Jesus, just like them. So imagine for a minute that uh, somebody with a reputation for seeking to try to undermine you, to destroy you, he shows up and says he wants to be your buddy. Uh, Now, so far you've only known him because of the constant harassment, the conversations he's had that have damaged your reputation, the sidebar meetings he's led to try and get you fired. He's been seemingly gunning for you for quite some time. So when they show up, you wonder if it's real, if it's a trick. Maybe he's just trying to get on the inside, trying to identify a better way to get at you somehow. Because the last time Saul was in town, Saul was on a mission to destroy the people that he's trying to get to know now. He doesn't seem like the same guy was showing up. And now he's extending his hand looking to become a friend, what would you do in that case? Verse 27 says, Then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He he also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. So Barnabas steps up and vouches for Saul. He says, I know this is real. I've watched as it's happened. I've been around the last three years and I've seen what he's doing. He's not just faking us out here. This is a little bit like a moment where you have somebody others have never met and you you introduce them, opening the door of opportunity for them. This guy, Barnabas, he bridges the gap of trust for Saul. And we see Barnabas a few different times in Scripture. One time, earlier on, he's giving money to people in need. And another time, he's lending his reputation to open the door, like this moment. And and another incident, he's giving someone a chance who's messed up. His real name is Joseph. Everyone knew him by his nickname, however, Barnabas. And you may know what it means. It means son of encouragement, meaning you bear the image of someone who is encouraging, who is continuing to provide encouragement and opportunity for others. Tradition shares that Barnabas was probably one of those who was following Jesus even around the time that Jesus sent out 70 of his followers to go and teach about him in different locations. He was likely one of the individuals that was a part of the 120 at at Pentecost. He'd been around for a while, and he had a reputation of being someone who was a fantastic support 
an advocate for people that God brought across his path. So this moment is no different. He shared his reputation with Saul, and Scripture tells us what happens next. Verse 28 says, So Saul stayed with the apostles, went all around Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. He debated some Greek-speaking Jews, but they tried to murder him. And when the believers heard about this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him to Tarsus, his hometown. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and it became stronger as the believers feared or lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. Now, recently a friend of ours uh, gave us some printed pictures. They had some memories of our lives of when we knew each other quite a number of years ago, and it was quite a wild experience to kind of look back on that. Sometimes you've had that opportunity, whether it's a physical photo album or whether it's a, a file on your phone of a number of older photos or even a framed photo that you discover or have hanging on your wall. For me, snapshots are kind of like that. Remember when, remember when we looked like that. Remember when this was happening. Remember when this all kind of went down. A picture that's so much more than what you can just see on the surface. There's so much that's happening that we can't see. There's the part that's just outside of the picture on either side or even above or below or behind where the camera is actually showing. And all that happens even after the still of that moment is grabbed. Wow, it's kind of amazing when you think about a snapshot. And that's a bit of what we've had right here, just a bit of a snapshot, so to speak, a snapshot of what loyalty can look like through the life of Barnabas. But let's take just a moment to explore some of those other sides, the pieces that might be a little bit outside the picture. There's several angles of loyalty for us to consider with Barnabas. In the first case that we're looking at here, we see very clearly that it's a loyalty that builds bridges. And, you know, as we said, Barnabas is lending his reputation to introduce Saul. In this case, as we said, it's a gift of an introduction. I can vouch for this real transformation that's happened in Saul's life. You can trust Saul because you can trust me. And it seems like that was enough for the disciples, even though there were likely some apologies that maybe needed to be pursued, right? I mean, there were, there's a good chance there's some people in that circle that Saul is being introduced to that as they accepted him, they may have recalled their family or friends and the beatings and the imprisonments and some of the other murders that had been part of Saul's journey before he left Jerusalem. This was a group that had a lot of good reasons to be skeptical of who Saul was, and Barnabas had better be right, because he had been putting a lot on the line for us to be willing to trust Saul. But the loyalty was this generous introduction that broke the ice for Saul, and what we see starting to happen next is how we know him as the Apostle Paul. But at some point there was a choice Barnabas had to make. Will I shrink from or will I stand with Saul? There's also a loyalty that we see in Barnabas that's big-hearted. And we kind of see a little bit of it here, but if we just kind of shoot back a little bit in the book of Acts to chapter 4, we're going to see Barnabas demonstrating God's generosity, a gracious generosity, with the resources that he's been provided. Because what we see is we hear how he's a landowner and he sells a piece of land and gives the money to the apostles so that people in need can be assisted. It's in Acts chapter 4, verses 36 and 37, if you want to check it out. Now, this was not at all required of him. Nobody said, in order for you to follow Jesus, you have to do this. But it was a response to what God was doing in him. And as a result, he showed loyalty to others around him. Loyalty at its root 
it often starts with generosity. It's a response to the activity of God in our lives and, and the connection that we have with others. And so at some point, there is a choice. Will I shrink from or will I stand with those who are in need? It's a loyalty we see in him that's big-hearted. We also get to see his loyalty displayed a little bit later on in Acts where he buries the hatchet. Years later, there's this mission that Barnabas and Saul take together. Now he's known as the Apostle Paul. And as they go on this tour, what would often happen is there'd be others that would join them for this particular trip. It's clear that Luke was along because he was kind of scribing some of the information that was happening. That's how we get to read about it in the book of Acts. There were others that were helpers on the journey, and one of those was a young man, young believer by the name of John Mark. And some point early on in this journey, John Mark either gets scared or gets homesick. It's, it's not completely clear, but it is something that happens where he leaves the entourage and heads home. So this is something that Paul really struggles with, and honestly so, because the next time they're set to go, Paul doesn't want to take John Mark with him. He, he's like, you know what, the best indicator of future behavior is his past behavior, and so if he left us once, he'll probably leave us again. Barnabas, on the other hand, is like, let's give him another chance. So we see that they kind of divide and they end up going in different directions on the next tour. As a result, they disagree on this second chance for John Mark. And here's Barnabas standing with his friend and with someone who needs a second chance. And he's kind of caught here in the middle redeeming John Mark from the fringes after he had messed up. Later on, we get to see in, in another book in Corinthians how you know, Paul writes how he and Barnabas had they'd worked things out. But you may know John Mark a little better as the author of the book of Mark. The Gospel of Mark was accounted by John Mark. Now here's this loyalty from Barnabas that buries a hatchet. Who's willing to stand with those who have messed up and need a second chance? And at some point he had to make the choice. Will I shrink from or will I stand with John Mark? Now all of these are the part of the snapshot, but they even help us to go a little bit beyond the borders of the picture. They, we get to see a picture of the loyalty of God displayed in a person. And there is so much more than what we can actually see here. It's all happening even behind the scenes in what we can't see. In fact, the loyal love of God is the reason behind Barnabas' loyalty to Saul, his loyalty to John Mark, and to the people who benefited from his gift of the sale of the land. Now, if you were to break down all that's wrapped up in Scripture and try to define God's loyal love, this it would be huge. It, it's summarized in three words, that there is obviously love that comes from loyal love. There is generosity, and we've explored that just briefly. But there's also this enduring commitment, and all of those are kind of rolled up into one in the words that are used in the Scripture to talk about God's loyal love. It's a side of the nature and character of God that's best displayed in him and with us as we allow him to build that loyal love part of our character as a result of walking and listening to him. So we get to see here, and what others get to see, is this snapshot, like I said, of loyal love that gets to be shown and displayed through us. Now, if you want to do a little bit more investigation about God's loyal love, I'd be delighted for you to start with uh, a, a, a Bible project video that's really reflective of God's nature and character, specifically by the title, Loyal Love. There's a, a link in the description box of the video here today for you to be able to check that out. 
The flow of loyalty really looks like this. God's demonstrating his loyal love to us through his word, through his character, through his nature, as he continues to love us and draw us to himself. And then the character of God grows in us as a result of us following Jesus and as a result of us walking with him and allowing him to influence our lives. And then we display loyal love, the kind of love that flows from our lives that looks like God's love to others. So here's this inspiring snapshot of loyalty in Barnabas, and it causes a few things to rise up in us. We tend to like what loyalty looks like when we're on the receiving end, right? I mean, I want my friends to treat me this way, the way that Barnabas has treated his friends. I want to be treated that way. But we realize that when it comes to our friendships, sometimes it's a little bit more challenging for us to give. It may begin with saying, I'd really like my friendships to look like that. But it's really rooted in allowing God to build that kind of loyalty in us. The kind of love and generosity and enduring commitment that builds bridges, that's big-hearted and that's willing to bury the hatchet. So as we look around, we're going to have to choose sometimes when we see who needs an on-ramp, who needs loyal love because of their past and some of the mistakes that they've been a part of, who needs loyal love to help bridge through those who might be skeptical about them, who needs loyal love to discover a new future, who needs loyal love for us to be advocating for them. If we're open to what God would do in us, maybe it'll look a little bit like our scenario we talked about earlier. Maybe it'll look like an introduction, like with Saul and Barnabas. But it will challenge us to discover, will we shrink from or will we stand with the people who need us? Imagine if the scenarios we face in the next 24 hours could be allowed to share the loyal love of God through us to others. We'll have to make that decision, won't we? Will we shrink from or will we stand with the people who need us? The question becomes for us, what will we do? Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for the fact that as you sacrificed yourself on the cross. You showed loyal love beyond all measure to us. And there's loyal love that you long for us to grow in our lives and change our character so that it looks more and more like you. And so as we think about that, we recognize that really for us to display the kind of loyal love that Barnabas showed, it really depends on us leaning on you. And so, God, today, as we think about our friendships, we probably think we're pretty loyal, but there's probably some times where maybe we've pulled back. Maybe there's been people who have needed us and, and we've, we've withdrawn from them, isolated them even more. And so, God, today, I pray that you would help us as we step into this week to recognize the moments where you're calling us to display the kind of loyal love that stretches us beyond the borders of where we are in our walk with you right now and how you're continuing to move us into a place where you're building that loyal love character in us. We're grateful to you for your goodness to us. We thank you for people and the way that they stretch us and how you use situations that come across our path to help us to know how you're building your character in us. We love you, we thank you, we praise you today in your name, amen. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels, and follow us on Facebook so that you'll be notified of the content there and stay up to date with everything happening in the church. If you enjoyed today's message, it would really mean a lot to us if you would like, comment, and share the video so that others can enjoy it too. If you happen to be in the Kingston area, 
like I said before, come on out. We would love to see you. If you're limited to online connection though, not a problem. Just make sure you check out our website for more at-home worship. And like I mentioned before, the link to our website is in the box below here that has other helpful resources for you as well. Please know that you are loved and that we are praying for you. And we certainly appreciate your prayers too. We'll see you soon.